What's up, ladies and gents? We should be live now. My name is Ryan. This is the DFS Five Pack. If you can, if you could do us the biggest favor, slide your finger over to that thumbs up button, click it. Uh, feel free to make any comments you would like. That is the joy of the internet and YouTube. But I'm here today to talk to you about Thursday night showdown. We got the Panthers at the Texans. I know, I know, it's the game of the year. Everybody, just slow your roll. It'll be here soon enough. Nah, not really, man. We know the Texans are one of the worst teams in football, and Carolina, while looking improved probably is not winning that division when there's a certain guy named Tom Brady leading a Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, team above him. So, no, this is not actually the game of the year, but it is a showdown, and we got NFL back tonight. So let's dive in to what I feel like is one of the more uh, – the easiest – one of the easier showdowns of the year to, uh, to start at the top, at least at the very minimum. We'll get into that here momentarily. All right, guys. Like I said, click that thumbs up button. The NFL package is up on the website link below. 125 covers all season. This includes the playoffs, like all the lineup construction videos for showdowns, main slate, everything like that. And because I'm in a great mood, I will reimburse anybody who buys the NFL package today $20. You will get that today, and it will be all there for you. So – Let's keep moving along. Subscribe to the station if you're new to it. So there's a guy in this game named Christian McCaffrey. This is about as easy of a pick as you guys are going to have all season long. He is, if not the top, one of the top fantasy players uh, in the league. And he is by so much distance the number one guy in this game. So he is going to be monster chalk. You all know it. Uh, no reason to really spend a lot of time on this one. If you want to be different, be different in other spots. Honestly, if you fade him, it's really because you probably feel like he gets hurt, which is just not the way to play. So he's going to be overwhelming chalk and overwhelming chalk at the captain position as well. Next up, let's talk about Sam Darnold. So uh, we're only a couple games in, but surprise, surprise, he looks a lot better away from the New York Jets. So uh, this is another kind of easy one for me. He is, in my opinion, the second guy that I put into a roster tonight. He goes McCaffrey by a long shot, and then we start talking Darnold. And then we'll start talking receivers here in a second. So uh, while he doesn't necessarily look like he's a second coming to Tom Brady, he does look better away from the Jets. And so far, uh, Mr. Wilson ain't looking so great over there. Maybe it's part issue with the franchise. So uh, he throws in the occasional rushing yards. He's got a hundred quarterback rating through two games. He's chalk number two after CMC. He's got a lot of weapons to th throw to, including obviously Christian McCaffrey. So he is the second guy that I'm putting into my roster this evening. Next up is where the decisions start. So after those two chalk pieces, which are pretty obvious to me, this is where you're going to have to make a decision. Assuming you put McCaffrey in the, uh, in the captain spot like most people will, you can't roster both DJ Moore and Brandon Cook, so you have to make a decision. Gone to head, I'm going DJ Moore. I think he's just as good as Cook's, probably better. Uh, I think most people would agree with that right now. Cook's has been awesome through the first two games, but now they're without Tyrod Taylor. Uh, you got a week to prep for or almost a week to prep for the rookie kid, Mills. Uh, Moore is very talented. I trust his floor. If you're trying to be different and you want to go with, you know, Robbie Anderson, all right, fine. Want to go with Marshall or something like that? Okay, I get that. But for me, if I'm making one lineup, I want what I feel to be my best options. And I think DJ Moore is one of the best options on the slate. So I got him a tick above Brandon Cooks. And assuming you start with Darnold and McCaffrey, you're not playing both, so you're going to have to make a decision. I think this is the probably ends up being the decision of the night for a lot of people. And while I'm going DJ Moore, I certainly, certainly, certainly understand why somebody else would opt to go Brandon Cooks, who right now is by far the best player on his very anemic offense tonight. Uh, a crazy idea for me would be to roster Moore in the captain spot and move CMC to a regular spot and just hope it's a big DJ Moore. He makes two big plays tonight. And that eats into Christian McCaffrey. And Moore has a big, big night. That would be one way to be a little different. Next up, uh, this is what I talked about with a pretty clear path tonight. So I think you roll those first two, and then you get to Cooks or Moore. And your next job right now is to start looking at some cheap guys. Well, we know that Amendola and Collins are out this evening, which means the Texans, um, route tree, and uh, wide receiver depth is very, very shallow because they roster a lot of running backs. So they were already shallow at wide receiver. Now you guys got drop in like hats. So after Brandon Cooks is the one, we're looking Conley as the two. So we're talking about a number two wide receiver getting a weaker corner at 1,600. He's going to be quite popular tonight. And then you still have like, like 
Miller and Roberts as the other wide receivers. These guys are also really cheap. They'll all get lower ownership than Conley. You can roster a couple of them. You're not looking for a ton out of these guys. None of them are great options, right? Because we have a weaker quarterback and everything like that. But they're so cheap for run, you know wide receivers that could be out there running 20, 30, even 40 potential routes in a game like this. So, yeah, you're going to want to get some of these guys at least onto your short list. And I think Conley is the best option. He's also likely the chalkiest option. Not saying Miller and Roberts don't get any love, but it should be lower than Chris Conley. He's projected to have more buyers than these two. Last up, let's talk about Philip Lindsay. So I wanted to throw in one GPP long shot. On a night like tonight where the basic build is pretty obvious, who could you take a look at as being kind of a long shot? So I think Philip Lindsay is the third place running back of the three guys for the Texans. However, it's not like it's a distant third place. His yards and everything like that have been down compared to like Ingram. He has scored in each of the first two games, uh, but he's not the pass catching guy like David Johnson, and he's not the main runner of the football of Mark Ingram. But, it, you know, these guys are all really, really even, in my opinion. And Lindsey, why couldn't it be his night? You know, what happens if, like, an older running back like a David Johnson or an Ingram gets a bit of a bum knee on the first drive? No questions that's a possibility. So Lindsey's coming in with really low projected ownership because not a lot of people want to roster the Texans running backs to begin with. And I think, like, Ingram gets the first shot at the most carries. Johnson gets the most uh, touches in the passing game through two games, which puts Lindsey as a bit of the odd man out. But I don't think he's like substantially in the third place. Uh, but ownership-wise, he should be the lowest owned of the three. So if you're trying to get different uh, and you know get up there in a tournament, I think he's your lowest owned of the three running backs. But not a significantly less likely to succeed as the other guys is the way I view it. So that's what we got for today, guys. Click that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the station. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Have a great day, and we'll come back with some mainstay stuff hopefully tomorrow.